hello and welcome for our URL validation by Pasture Shit. We are really proud of making this live. It was a long journey of three months of developing the tool. I hope you really enjoyed. So today we're gonna talk about the Cheshit itself. Uh, the real case scenarios we have found the vulnerabilities on live bug bounty programs using the Cheshit word list. And I would like to show you some real life use cases, how to use the tool, so you will better understand what real functionality hides behind it because it might sometimes be a little bit obscure for end user. So if you haven't tried it yet, I recommend you to give it a try and go to the, our website, Web Security Server Side Request Forgery web page, and there you will find a lot of links, or you can get just click on this one and go straight to the Euro validation that passes shoot itself. Let's go on. So if you haven't seen, here it is. This uh, standalone application, the most beautiful thing of it, it never sends the information to the any server. It's fully JavaScript application that works inside your browser. Of course, it might cause some problems if you will create a huge, really, really huge word list, but we will talk about it later on when I will show you the full potential of the tool. So what is the main reason why we designed this cheat sheet itself? The URL validation bypasses unknown vulnerabilities for decades, and the biggest problem of it is that there are billions of sources of information. They are different PDF files, research tweets, etc. And all of this information are distributed across the whole internet. And it might be a big challenge to find out the useful types of payload for your particular case. So that's why we decided to split all the URL validation payloads and techniques to the big groups of the known vulnerabilities and we call them the arbitrary uh, URL and the host header and the cor course, or course origin. So fully qualified absolute URL is useful when you have the full string. Usually it might be request parameter or maybe I don't know refer header or any other type of headers. Hostname is speaks itself, it's just usually host header or where you can submit the domain name. And course is type of payloads that only will be valid course origin value. So you can't send anything that browser won't send through this one. We have a couple of encodings. It was a huge challenge to me to implement the different kind of encodings to be supported with the Burp Suite itself. If you might know, there is a couple of special Unicode symbols that can be sent through the Burp Suite intruder because of the technical issues we have. Sometimes the sequence of bytes cannot be identify the valid encoding of these sequence of bytes because of the nature of encoding. You never know is it UTF-8 or UTF-16 etc. and the intruder itself cannot predict this. To somehow mitigate this problem we designed this intruder's person encoding to be intruder least friendly tool so you don't have to worry about it if you are working with something that supports person coding. If you're not sure what, what kind of payload, it's better to use encode everything or special characters if you know for sure what kind of payload you would like to send. And speaking about the modern applications like all of these JSON, GraphQL, etc., we also introduce Unicode Escape this is literally the JSON-like escape sequence where you are using the slash u and for 
digits that represent any any kind of UTF-8 symbol. The payload structure itself under the hood, the chipset itself is driven by the number of JSON files. Each of these JSON files contains the payload string, prefix, suffix, and the ID. ID is the hash sum of the concatenation strings of prefix, payload, and suffix. So we will be sure that there is no duplicates inside of all of these different kind of uh, word lists inside the JSON string. And the payload itself supports special templates like attacker domain name and allow the name name. We will talk about it later on, but long story short, it allows you to replace this template with any string you would like to be changeable during your word list generation. We also have a couple of advanced settings that allows you to set up schema paths or any different kind of uh, modification of the payload. It's really useful when you work with different kind of cloud metadata. For instance, by default, it's override your payload with HTTP schema, even you are working with HTTPS, because usually the metadata schema works through the plain text HTTP protocol. But if you would like, you can disable this behavior by changing this checkbox. And now we are heading to the most interesting part of it. So the results of our internal research. We got six different word lists. You can see them on the screen right now, and we will talk about each of them in details later on. Cloud metadata in point. Right now we support this magic AWS uh, API address, metadata API address, and a couple of more taken from the official documentation of the AWS Amazon. So uh, if you would like, you can just select only this for the list, particularly for the known vulnerabilities if your target is working on the cloud infrastructure. Also, you can use the IP address modification and achieve the same results of the AWS metadata by entering this IP address to the attacker domain name. As you might see right now on the screenshot, the IP address will be represented in multiple ways like binary, hexadecimal, or hexadecimal or overflow, dword, dword with overflow, truncated uh, IP version, etc. etc. Domain allow list bypass. This is a huge, huge subject. There are, I would say, we can talk about it more than 40 minutes uh, talking about different kind of payloads. I was trying to collect all known working right now payloads and try to reduce all non up to date payloads known in the wild. It's really a good question what what kind of these domain domain allow bypasses we should include, but we decided to stop only on the working examples and not to spend a lot of time on on the patched vulnerabilities. As a, an example, well, let's say the teaser, I would like to show you the most interesting ones, like this particular one, when you can use the Node.js or browser to be treat this string like example.com and Python and Perl like AWS metadata and point. I will show you later on the demo how it all works. Another interesting one submitted by our great community example is when your payload starts with a loud string and then after the dot you can put anything. It will work not only works for the different kind of course vulnerabilities, so you can abuse the different kind of prefix uh, vulnerabilities, but also inside the Python URL lead parse library. Fake relative URLs. This word list designed to collect all known 
uh, funny payloads that might be incorrectly treated by client-side code, for example, JavaScript, as the just a pure string or a relative URL, and but when will be sent it to the browser, will interpret her like the full absolute URL. Just as an example, uh, as you might know, inside the absolute URL, you allow to put put any kind of new line characters, literally everywhere. It can be inside the host, inside the schema, between the slashes, etc., etc. If you haven't seen, the girl did amazing research about HTML entities, so this funny string will be treated like the fully URL, even it contains the ampersand symbols, etc. It's all done because of these named HTML entities. That's a pretty, pretty amazing research. If you haven't seen it, I do really recommend you to go to the Shazer and take a look at all entities allowed type of fuzzer results. IPv6. It's not only include different kind of IPv4 inside IPv6 type of bypasses, but also a really nice, amazing payloads that allows you to use the different kind of interfaces inside the IPv6 after the person sign, so you can embed your attacker domain inside the interface name, or even use the person person in encoding sign of the person itself or IP the future. Look back. We decided to extract this word list to separate word list because usually this is the magic IP address that you would like to test this out because uh, it's always available in 99% and we did a lot of funny mutations like on this screenshot, like local host, low calories host, etc. In different scenarios, it might be normalized back to the local host string. Speaking about the normalization, we also did a really nice word list. It called the URL splitting unicorn characters. It based on the special research that shows that some unicorn normalization strings might be interpreted as special significance characters inside the protocol like dot slash hashtag uh, add question mark etc in our example for example web attacker dot c the funky uh, utf8 symbol a slash c example.com will be normalized to the web attacker dot ca Once again, if you haven't seen, the Shazer also supports the different kind of UTF normalization tricks. So in this particular example, browser will normalize the brackets to the IPv6 address and will open the, that URL. I will show you this example later on. We also support different kind of circled alpha digits it's really wide known type of bypasses for the different kind of web location firewalls. Also we support the full width Unicode characters and segmented digits. It's not a mistake, this particular string won't be rendered inside your browser, but it should be 127.001 and it will work inside the latest Chromium too. The new release, we just released it today, is a special regex bypass validation attack. Whenever you enter inside the allowed domain, the string that contains dots, it will create for you a special word list that will try different kind of bypass techniques inside the dot. And now we go into the most interesting part taken from the 
live huge amount of bug bounty programs. So the most popular bypass these days is still the prefix and suffix validation errors when you can attach your attacker domain, in my example is d4d.1 to the allowed domain name and you can bypass the course origin checks. As always I mentioned you can spot these type of vulnerabilities where the dot itself might be incorrectly interpreted and you can register the new domain name like prodxexample.com and get access to the domain. Another really cool example, if you're not familiar, the Firefox and Safari allows special characters inside the origin and host header name. So if you are lucky enough and can afford yourself the wildcard domain name and can register it, you can use the dollar sign as a split character and split the prodexample.com so the parts behind the since will interpret it like the prodexample.com while the browser will send prodexample.com dollar sign d4d.1 and we go into the demo i hope it will works otherwise i have the pre-recorded so we don't have to worry about it It's pretty simple personal checks library in our Web Security Academy. The main goal to, for today's session is not to show how to solve the Web Academy library itself, is how to use uh, the tool. As I said, you can put anything inside the allow domain name and will be automatically created the word list for you. We can do it like as I, as I said for A B C D etc. And it will replace any special any dot with X and try to use it as exploit if you will click copy to the payload list. And of course it won't work because it's not a valid example but it's just just a demo. And if you would like to try the real one, it of course will solve the library. We go the now of course it uh, and now we're heading to the most interesting part of the cheat sheet. As I said, we can create the different circle digits payloads, we can create the full width payload and uh, the signature digits. Unfortunately our lab itself won't contain a lot a lot of digits. Yeah, but anyway, it's it's funny to try it out. If you want to give it a try. Mm So that's it for this demo. 
I also prepared a pretty nice one for the Python itself. It's designed to show how the URL parse loop works. So if we will go back here, it's a pretty simple one. So how does it work? If you will send this request to the example.com, it will tell you that it allows to send to the, any subdomain. So our goal is to bypass to the subdomain itself and make it send to any other domain. This is a really cool one. As I said, the browser cell will parse this string as a webattack.com while the Python will consider this example.com. There you go, and we have the open redirect. Let's go back the slides. We put all of this data to the our GitHub repository, so if you would like you can create any pull request to the Chishu data itself. Uh, we also have the schema file that should help you to identify which keys are mandatory, how to create a new payload, etc. Or if you don't want to bother all of these Node.js style, you can just create the issue request and I will do it. So the my takeaways for you for today's session. Try different contexts to adjust your word list. Try to make sure you use different kind of encodings. Sometimes it brings really interesting observations. For example, uh, for the Python itself, you can even try different kind of fake relative URLs exploits because it, because it allows you to use uh, non-printable characters inside the schema files. It, may, it might might have a good results for your bug bounty huntings. And of course submit your pull requests. And special credits for anyone who already have submitted the issues, pull requests and all of these beautiful people who helped me and share their research on the internet.